Hey Eurovision fans, Natalia Barbu will represent Moldova in Eurovision 2024 with her song In the Middle. I'm going to listen and react to the national final performance. Then we're going to look at Moldova's place in the contest by looking at their 10 year record. We'll also look at their qualification record. We'll check out the odds and the community rankings to try and get a full idea of can this qualify for the Eurovision final. So uh, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So I didn't react to the Moldovan national final this year. That was purely a time decision. I've been trying to cover all the national finals, but it's just very difficult for one person. So because there was quite little hype for it, I decided to prioritize other ones instead. So I haven't heard this song or any of the other songs that were available. So I'm going in totally fresh. I have noticed that this is bottom of the Eurovision scoreboard, I'll be honest. I've liked songs which have been on the bottom of the scoreboard before, so I'm not gonna hold that against Moldova at all. Of course, Natalia Barbu has been to Eurovision before. She was in Eurovision 2007, back when there was only one semi-final. I hated that system, I still hate it. Those were the dark ages. She came 10th in that semi-final, so she just scraped in. And then in the final, she came 10th. She's coming back after 17 years to represent Moldova again. It's a really, really cool story. And I'm hoping that I will just like it, even though <laughs> apparently not very many other people do. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I will be reacting to the national final performance. I'm pretty sure visual copyright will be okay. I'm expecting to get audio copyright, so I'll put the original up onto my Patreon if you wanna go check that out. My Patreon has lots of cool other fun stuff as well. This is Natalia Barbu singing In the Middle, Wanna Know My Secret Bang. It's kind of cool going into reaction having no idea what I'm going to see. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. They're all dressed very, very similar. You almost can't tell who Natalia is. Okay, that's kind of cool so far. They've all got the violins there, so that's kind of catching my attention. What's going to happen with the violins? Okay, it sounds like a pretty intro so far. Very... Uh, slightly odd in the way that they're standing. Oh, there's a little bit of movement now. Okay. Okay. Getting some violence coming in, a little bit of drama. The lyrics sound okay, nothing groundbreaking. Okay, popped off. Oh. Oh, there's a nice uh, cultural element there. A little bit of an ethnic flair. The acoustics are not fantastic. I'll listen to the studio version later. I like that that we got those um, antiquity architecture came in the back. That was cool. Oh, one girl's dancing. Is she like do that? Or is she be naughty? Oh, two of them are doing it now. It's okay. With your wings up, be afraid of falling down. No, no, naughty lyrics. The verses are quite flat. Okay, another pop drop. This is a pre course. I do like this brown color palette. The brown smoke, that's kind of cool. What are the violins going to come in? Voice is strong as well. The chorus, it has like a kind of an ethnic element. It sounds kind of quiet though. I'd like them to like go full in. Oh, the violins are starting now. Okay, that's a cool moment, but it took a long time. That pulling it out like a sword was really cool. And the violin moment is a nice breakup. We've got a crown. I'm getting a lot of historical visual stuff here. We've got the statue and the crown. Oh, a little bit of pop right? I think I'm gonna enjoy this more when I listen to the studio version because the acoustics, the production sounds very quiet. It's not massively wowing me, let's be real. Okay, and it's over. Um, okay, look, I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna go in for a listen of the studio version there because uh, her vocals sounded good and I could hear the singing quite clearly, but all the background production, the musicality, the melody, all of the kind of supporting music, 
I couldn't hear very clearly. It sounded like it was at 50% volume, so I just couldn't appreciate it fully. So I definitely will go in for that second listen. But first of all, let me give you my first impressions. I think it's a very striking opening when you see them there at the start and they're all dressed in the same outfit. There's this kind of like surreal, like they're standing to attention. Um, I do think it's a little bit confusing that she's got the exact same outfit. It looked pretty much identical to the other four girls. I think it might be better if she just had something that made, made it clear that like she is the person singing, she is the artist some slight difference in the costuming whether it be a headpiece or just like some extra something on her shoulders like some feathers or like a golden Greek style you know what I mean this thing from antiquity it's a little bit confusing when you see the artist is called Natalia Barbu and then we've got a five piece is it a girl group the violins thing builds a little bit of anticipation but then the amount of anticipation that it built up the payoff was not really worth it. I thought like maybe the violins would be like a big, big moment, like an explosion flurry of magic. The, the pulling out the bow from behind, that is really cool. I really like that, definitely keep that. But yeah, we just need to kind of make the drama feel like more of a payoff. So maybe show the violins later. So there's less of like two minutes until they actually do something or make the use of the violins more dramatic. Uh, it just felt like, let's be real, the staging is standing, pull out a bow and play the violin. Let's just be quite real for a second. That's what it is currently. Oh, and of course, they've, they've got plenty of time to take that build on and work. Her voice sounded good. Obviously, I think she's a very accomplished singer. I just don't think that's gonna be an issue. Like she's, she sounds like she's got operatic vocal training. The song and the verses, was just like, I think a lot of people are gonna leave. I think they're gonna go get coffee, they're gonna go to the toilet. There's nothing really gripping that I could hear. Again, maybe that might change when I hear the studio version. The chorus did have that lovely Moldovan sound. It sounded unique, it sounded special. It didn't I couldn't pick out like a strong hook in the chorus. I just don't feel like the percentage of the performance that was gripping was enough, if that makes sense. There were some small segments that were gripping and then there were lots where it's just like, I'm able to sit through because I'm like a Eurovision freak. <laughs> I'll watch anything Eurovision. I just don't think the casual viewer is going to be engaged or care or maybe want to wait around long enough to find out what the violin is doing or why there's five of them dressed the same or anything like that. I like the LEDs behind. It was like this kind of brown, earthy colored. We had some winds and smoke coming through. But yeah, I like there were a couple of restaurants. There were a couple of statues. There was crowns. So I felt like this was talking about historical elements. I have to admit, I didn't pick up like much of a meaning or a theme in the song. The few lyrics that I did hear sounded really generic. I heard something about wings and flying, which is just like my one of my ultimate Eurovision no-nos. So yeah, I'm obviously gonna go through the lyrics later, but first impression, not much of a story, not much of an impact, a lot of dead time that could have been used better. I'm trying to get at why is this last on the Eurovision scoreboard and it kind of makes sense to me. You gotta keep in mind that first impressions are really important because 99 point I'd say more than 99% of people watching Eurovision are watching the songs for the first time when they watch the semi-final. That opening tableau, that first 10 seconds, 20 seconds, that first verse is really important. Does this person want to bother engaging with this three minute piece? People are not gonna pay attention to all 15 songs. They're probably gonna pick a couple that they're gonna focus on and then some other ones, they're just gonna lose their concentration. And that right now looks like a toilet break song. Okay, that's enough first impressions. Let's go to the studio version. One and number six of The production in the studio version is way more audible and clear. The the beat in the chorus is really lovely. Lyrics are repetitive. Okay, I've just finished listening to the studio version. Let's get super, super real here. That takes too long to build up. That last half actually should probably be the first half almost, or the, at least the middle third, and then we should ramp up even more towards the end. It doesn't reach enough of a satisfying climax. The violins come in way too late. The lyrics are really repetitive. I don't understand why she's repeating the verses. Like the verses are the same. Let me just double check I'm getting that right, but I kept hearing the same phrases in the verses. Like that's very lazy songwriting if that's the case. Yeah, like this, these lyrics are just, these lyrics are super lazy, so I'm just gonna call it out for what I perceive. Listen your voice inside your heart, right in the middle. Open your mind just like a door, right in the middle. Okay, that's fine. Raise your wings, don't be afraid of falling down. This is like pure Eurovision cliche lyrics that we've just had five million times. Stop talking about wings and using your wings to fly. Mm. I want you to be happy all your life, my beautiful angel, a work of art. 
Okay, so it feels there like she's singing about maybe her child or a beloved one or someone that she wants to care for. You live for sunshine, spread it around. I know your heart is filled with love. Okay, I like that. I like that stanza, those four lines. It's like she's trying to put, send her wisdom to someone younger than her, trying to say that your positivity, your bright spirit is a good thing. I like that stanza. Then she says, Tarara. So this verse is literally the exact same as the first verse. The only difference is she says, listen to your voice inside your heart in the first one. And the second one, she says, I feel your love inside my heart. So there's one line change between this opening 10 lines and the second 10 lines. Then we get, raise your wings, don't be afraid of falling down. So the same thing we had in the first verse. And I want you to be happy all your life. Maybe this, this is super lazy songwriting. This is 10 lines just repeated. And the first line has a small change in it. Of the 10 lines, I think four of them are nice and then six of them sound super generic. So lyrically, this can get so much better. I don't see why you would completely repeat those 10 You Can you not write 10 more lines? Like you could do that in 15 minutes. I don't get that. I don't get that decision making at all. There is potential to revamp. I hope they do revamp this because lyrically that is not giving me anything. And the message of wanting to send this positive message to a young one. I like that bit. Take those four lines, expand that into the whole song, get rid of the entire repetition of the 10 lines, give us another 20 lines that are completely different, talking about this theme of wanting your child to grow up and be a positive person and impact the world. Okay, let's look at the other aspects. Her as an artist, great. Really, she's got good stage presence, she's got a good voice. I don't have any issues with her. I think that she's good and we know that she's got the experience to perform before. We've seen her on stage before at Eurovision 2007. She knows what she does. She's not going to get nervous. She's going to be great on stage. She's got the experience. She's older and wiser now, so she's probably going to be even better. Now, is that because it's on Etapa Nacional, the national selection? Last year, Pasha Parfenay was on and he already had a really great show going. So. You know, this stage is not amazing, the sound is not amazing, but you can still have a bit of a concept. This staging concept is not good enough. It's too static. It's five women dressed the same, standing, waiting for the bus for a very, very long time. There's all this anticipation about a violin because well, there's nothing else to get anticipated about. They pull out their bow, they fake play a violin for 20 seconds, and then the song is over. Girl, that is not working. That is just going to be a Eurovision flop. So they need to completely redo the staging. I'd say keep the styling. I like the styling. I think it looks cool. Make her stand out as being the main act. Give her something extra. If they want that congruity between her and the other four, that's fine. Maybe the other four are meant to represent like earlier versions of herself or there's meant to be a sense of community. So that's why they want their costumes to be the same. But it doesn't have to be like so matchy-matchy. Like you're wearing this exact same outfit. You just ordered five instead of four. And now obviously when we go to Eurovision, we can get swooping Kang rivals and we can get different things going on. But we need a story going on here. The song doesn't have a story because the lyrics are so meaningless. So they're going to have to fake a story somehow, which they've done before, 2018 with My Lucky Day, that song wasn't really about much either and they still managed to make it super fun, super vibrant. This feels like they're starting at a much lower point because as a concept, there's nothing here really. So it does worry me because Pasha started in a really cool place. He already had like his music video with the dancers with the horns and he had the flautist being Pan, and then he had all this moon imagery, he had so, such a strong visual concept, he had dancing and choreography, he had the guys on the drums, he had so much entertainment going on as a base product, and then they just built on that, working up to Eurovision. Natalia's got styling, and I, can't, and I liked her LEDs as well, but as a co actual concept, movement, choreography, storytelling, emotions, zero out of 10, zero out of 10, zero out of 10 is just not there at all. There's nothing to grab onto. Why would someone be engaged with this? What is the emotion that they're pulling out of this? What's the story? Why does someone want to sit through this for three minutes? I can't get it. I will say the studio version, the production sounded a lot more interesting. So obviously in Malma, it's going to sound better. There's going to be more things for people to grab onto. And the the acoustics in Etapa Nacional are obviously pretty poor. So this is going to sound better. She still sounded very good as a singer. The, the Moldovan delegation needs to just absolutely not scrap the staging. They need to pick out all the good things and then scrap the rest and then rebuild up and then put those nice things into the newly built staging. 
God, Jesus, sorry, that got me a little bit angry. So let's talk about Moldova in the last 10 years of the contest. And we can see that they're ranked 19th out of 44. And this is really incredible because Moldova do not have a big budget. They really don't. They are working with limited resources. There are countries who can afford pyro and dance like choreographers from abroad and, and moldova literally just have to work within their means they have to use creativity and their imaginations and they do so well and i think that's why moldova is really beloved in the community for having just working really hard getting things done uh being creative and imaginative and just having a fun stage show that's what i think about with moldova they've actually been su really successful recently if you see since 2021 qualifying three years in a row coming 13th top 10 in 2022 with Trenella tool. I always say it wrong. Someone always teaches me how to say it and then I don't say it for a year and I forget. Trenula tool, that's what Google Translate is telling me. So Trenula tool was amazing in, in 2022. A really great example of Moldova bringing that feelingness, happiness, joyful, carefree, real drinking song, really easy beat for everyone to process. The staging was so beautifully organized the way everyone was in their little section and they still felt like a community, fantastic. And then 18th last year with Pasha Parfine, also qualifying again. And their best result in 2017 coming third, Sunstroke Project singing Hey Mama, amazing result. And then another 10th place in 2018. I still think that the Moldovan delegation has the capacity to think outside the box and send something really well. This is one of those years where they need to pull out the big stops and use the, that Moldovan staging magic. So is this gonna qualify? I don't think this is qualifying at this point in time. If you take that national final stage show, it's too flat, it's not interesting enough, there's no lyrical engagement. I just think people are gonna check out. They are in the second half of the first semifinal. I think the semifinals are looking like they're actually gonna turn out even. Originally on paper, semifinal number one looked like the semi of death, but some of the songs in semifinal number two are elevating a little bit more. I actually think both of them are probably gonna be semis of death. This first semi-final though, you look at that first half, I think there's an argument for every single one of the songs in the first half qualifying. It's very unlikely that all seven will, but it's not impossible, that's what I'm saying. Very rarely do we get more songs qualifying for the first half, but it did happen twice in 2018. And then we look in the second half, we've got Finland, you've got to think are probably taking a place. We've got Raven who did an amazing performance just now in Dora. We've got Australia potentially coming with something big. Portugal, I haven't heard yet, um, but I've heard that they have got some good songs. This is competitive and sending something that's just a little bit in the middle. It's kind of in the song title, I should have guessed. It's just not gonna cut it. Being in the second half helps their chances around 10 to 15% more. This needs to have more movement. It needs to have a storyline. We need to have her on the stage maybe on her own and these dancers coming in maybe one by one. We need some, a beginning, a middle and an end. We need a problem that begins at the start and we need a conclusion by the end. I think the song needs a revamp. I think they need to make it more exciting. Take the last half, put it earlier, have more of a crescendo, more ethnic elements. Sell out, go full ethnic. There's nothing wrong with selling out to send more ethnic when you're going to Eurovision. People absolutely love that. They love hearing that really beautiful Moldovan sound. I never underestimate the Moldovan delegation, their ability. I thought Tren... I've already forgotten how to say it. Trenuletul. So yeah, I underestimated Trenuletul before and they were amazing. I felt pretty confident Pasha was going to go through, which takes us to our next spot. Can this win Eurovision? No, it can't win Eurovision. It's 35th in the odds. There's absolutely no chances to win Eurovision. I will give you my house if this went to your vision. I'll give it to you, I'll just, you can all share it. I'll give you everything I own. I'll give you all my rugby t-shirts. You can have it all. This is, this is not winning. In its current form, let me add that in. If they do a massive revamp and change everything, then who knows, but right now the way it is, no way. And then, as I said earlier on in the video, where is this in the Eurovision scoreboard? I already know that this is last because I recently did my Eurovision scoreboard update video. The Eurovision scoreboard is not perfect, but generally, ethnic songs by female artists do pretty well. I would consider those two the things that Eurovision fans tend to enjoy. It's not a full ethnic song, it's like half ethnic. This is dead last. That is really, really, really not good. They have to be looking at this. I'm hoping that they're getting this feedback and realizing that sending things as they are is not gonna work. They've got two and a half months, plenty of time to do some big, big changes. Okay, so that's what I thought about Natalia Barber singing in the middle for Moldova. What did you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. What would you change with the staging? Do you think she needs a revamp? Thank you to Corgi and Mum, Amelie, 
and anonymous for supporting on buy me a coffee no new donations on paypal but you can support the channel there too if you want i'll leave links to you in the description down below and of course thank you to my patrons all over the world for patronizing the channel on my patreon you can get the original audio and visuals when i get copyrighted you can also get some early releases some behind the scenes previews and you can be part of our my year vision scoreboard group so go check that out if you're a fan but of always thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video and Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, blah, blah.